So in the previous two videos, you have looked at free fall in one dimension, dropping a ball. You have also looked at free fall in two dimension, throwing a ball up, watching it slow down, make a U-turn and fall. You have learned how to graph them and you have also learned how uh, to draw the displacement, the velocity, acceleration graphs, and also you have learned how to use your kinematics equation. So now we are going to level up some more. What happens when after the ball hits the ground? Because let's be real, not all collision look like this, like an anvil or a bowling ball. Sometimes your collision will look a little bit more like a ping pong ball. So maybe something like this. It goes boing, 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 boing. Okay, let's trace out the part of the ball. You will notice that, notice that every rebound, there is a loss in kinetic energy. Okay, so now we're going to do two things. We're going to try to graph and then solve a question involving a rebound or basically the collision of the ball and when it comes up again. Okay, so you may be wondering, hmm, is there a case where there is totally no loss in energy? where my height is always the same like this one. Well, in the ideal case, yes. But this is an ideal case, so we will do the ideal case where there's no change in height and then followed quickly by increasing the rate of loss of kinetic energy. Okay, so every time you rebound, you don't get back to the same height. Of course, the material of the ball and the, the type of floor will get to influence how much the kinetic energy is conserved. So let's put all of this into a graph. First, to help us visualize this, I'm going to just roughly sketch out the scenario. Okay, so let us set our parameters first. I'm going to have the ground somewhere like this. Okay, and I will drop a ball from a certain distance. Okay, let's say here t is equal to zero and the ball is at a height h above the ground. Or rather, since this is the initial height, I will call this h not zero for initial okay here at this point the ball's velocity is zero it will accelerate 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 until it hits the ground okay so let's say it hits the ground here and when it hits the ground the ball will have a velocity of v1 and to make our life easier on this friday night i'm going to just give v1 a value let's say 10 meter per second so if Ke is conserved, this means that the ball will leave the floor, okay, along, they are along the same line. Uh. I draw them side by side so you can see, but actually they are the same line, all right? So this one is also going to leave at 10 meter per second. This is also a magnitude of V1. But since we all know that velocity is a vector, so we need to assign, assign positive or negative. So you have to decide, hmm. I think I'll just follow the normal convention. I'm going to draw here so that we can see very clearly. Uh, I will take the up direction as positive and the down right direction as negative. Okay, so this would be negative 10 and this will be positive 10. And since there is no loss in kinetic energy, Ke is conserved, then this ball can return to its original height h1. Okay, so what graph are we going to draw? We will draw the acceleration graph, the velocity graph, and the displacement graph. Okay, so the easiest one to draw is actually, I mean, I don't know, you can start anywhere. So let's say I start with velocity. Lah, okay, so for the velocity graph, right, um, we start, we let, we, you imagine, oh, you hold the ball and then you let go. So the ball starts with zero and then it will accelerate downwards. So I'm going to just give it a negative, value of v until it hits the ground. So this value here, when it hits the ground, is negative 10. Okay, then after that, after it hits the ground, it will rebound. Okay, probably rebound somewhere here like this. And then this one here is positive 10. Okay, so it goes back, leaves the floor. So I'm going to label some points here so you know. This point here is impact the ground. And then this point here, we will leave the ground. You may be wondering, hmm, miss, the the contact time, ah, very short, is it? Yes, very short. So when we draw at this scale, cannot really tell. Or even if you can tell, it is a little bit tilted. When the rebound time is significant, 
think about the trampoline question that you have done. Okay, so there's a past year question that involves trampoline. Trampoline questions will have a longer rebound time. But in this case, I assume the floor is solid, as solid as your interest and ability in physics. So rebound time, very small. So right now, it will travel, it will leave the ground at 10. And then as it leaves the ground, imagine that the ball is going up. Slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, slow down, stop. Velocity, decrease, decrease, decrease. Sorry, take a dollar. Decrease, 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 stop. Ah, so it decrease, 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 stop. That is, it's not going to stay here, right? What's it going to do? It's going to come down. So it will increase its speed in the negative direction. Okay, so here it leaves the ground. It will slow down and stop here. And then after that, it will accelerate and move faster and faster. Means this is like the graph that we draw, just many, many times the graph as that we draw, correct? It's putting all the graphs together, okay? So this one will look something like this. And of course, it's going to reach the same uh, same height. So let me try to draw the line a bit better. These two lines are obviously parallel, okay? And the reason why they are parallel is because they will have the same uh, acceleration. We'll talk about that later. So maybe I will draw it for another rebound and then I'll call it a day. Okay, so something like this. And continue, so on and so forth. Right? So in this case, right, do you know what is going to happen? What will happen here is uh, you will have a scenario where the area is the same. This value of H, this area here, is the same as the other area here, up here. They have the same area. In fact, the area of all these graphs are the same. Because why? The area represents the rebound height. Okay, so this will be H0, this is H0, this is H0. In fact, everybody is H0. Okay, so you might be thinking, why, are miss, why is it that the area is positive and negative though? If we get positive and negative area, so let me finish this one, this is also h naught. because sometimes the ball is moving down. Sometimes the ball is moving up. Okay? So it depends on whether it's moving down or moving up. So if it goes down, hits the ground, leave and go back to the original point here, this is at maximum height. So this where it touches the axis here and here, these are all at maximum height. You return back because you drop from here, hit the floor, come back up, you return back. This is the maximum height. Okay? So these are examples of the VT graph. Okay? The peak is the same and these lines are all parallel. Okay, let's talk about the parallel lines now. Parallel lines here, okay, so if you look at the gradient here, okay, let me label this, hmm, what color to use. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So all this VT graph, the lines are parallel. This line and this line is parallel. Okay, And they are parallel to show that the acceleration is equal to negative G. Okay, So if now I want to draw the acceleration graph, it is relatively straightforward. You will expect a negative G, but teacher, you see uh, this part a bit strange. Uh, this is weird sharp edge here like a bit weird right ah yes so the acceleration is gravity unless the ball is whack the floor okay so that means i need to adjust a bit ah you also adjust with me okay draw these graphs with me ah don't just watch me draw so for a brief period in time there's a spike this is the impact force okay this is when the ball is in contact with the ground because the time is very short, so the force is very big. That's why the ball can change direction. So this one is all during impact. Okay, during impact. So And because everything remains the same, so basically this uh, scenario will repeat, repeat, repeat with the same values. Otherwise, this one is negative G. Okay, like that. Lah. So if you want to, I can draw the, the next one for you. This one here will also be something like this. Ding, 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 ding. Do lah, like that lah. Okay, boleh. All right, great. 
You also notice that uh, if I draw this properly, this time and this time is the same. So this gap here, this T, T is the time between the ball hitting the ground, go up, come back down and hit the ground again. So this is called time of flight of the ball. All right. Okay. Draw V, draw A because we look at the gradient, which is easy to look because this one very steep, very positive. So it's a large positive number. Okay. What about the displacement? So just now, if you look at your graph or just now you look at the simulation, since we can replicate the displacement, every time we rebound, we should be able to get the value of H0. So if I dot, 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 dot here, everything is going to be H0. Okay. So I now need to figure out when is it that we reach maximum height. Okay, so we started off at maximum height and then we let go of the ball. Okay, and then here is where the ball touches the ground. So I'm going to treat, okay, let me see, did I label correctly? I will treat the release position as H0. I measure from the ground. Ah, okay. So because I want to replicate the graph that I see just now, Miss, you measure from the ground and you measure from the top, the graph is different. Ah. Yes, the graph is different. Try and draw and see what happens if I measure from the top. But in order to get the same one that I got from the simulation, I must measure H from the ground up. So I will start with H0. Okay? I will assign it as homework. All right. So anyway, this one here, you will start at H0. It will go down and then this is where it touches the ground so it will accelerate 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 steeper and steeper and steeper and steeper hop pop and here is where it will have maximum height so it will go back up Boing. so all this part here of the graph if you draw it or you graph it carefully they are all identical Boing. Boing. and this will keep Boing, boing in or rebounding, rebound, rebounding until forever. Okay, this is ideal scenario. Maintain the same speed, 10 at every single rebound, maintain the same height, H0 at every single rebound. But you know, life is not perfect, miss. You know, we lose energy. I attend, I boing boing from maths, boing to chemistry, boing to bio, boing to computer science, boing to physics. My energy is gone. So don't worry, I got you. I will draw that graph now. Here's a scenario where the kinetic energy is not conserved. Okay, so let's say every time the ball bounces, it loses energy. So it goes here, boing goes up, lose energy from negative 20 to positive 18 meter per second. We call this collision inelastic. So take note of the term inelastic because we will come back and we'll see this again or maybe you do some question and you encounter inelastic. This means Ke not conserved. Okay? So it will leave at a smaller speed means it will rebound at a smaller height. And you will tend to get a graph looking like this. Many rebounds later, it will stop. Teacher, this one looks like the ST graph, correct? Lah. All right. So let us graph the acceleration, the velocity, the displacement. Okay. So let's start by modifying the graph that we already have. This is acceleration time. But every time we rebound, we get the same amount of force because the ball will collide with, at the floor with the same speed. But if let's say your KE is not conserved, then you will get a graph that looks a bit where the peak will decrease, 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 right? So it's going to look something like this. Whoops. It's too, too many. Okay, it's going to look something like this. All right. So right now, you can see your, yeah, I draw or rather we have a graph for this one. You will see that this peak will decrease, okay? Smaller and smaller each time. So eventually it will decrease to zero. All right, so acceleration, okay. Let us now modify velocity. How would this velocity graph look like? So if you look at this new velocity time graph, obviously we won't be able to return to the original height, okay? And you will see that every time there's impact, the peak gets smaller and smaller and smaller. 
All right. So this graph is not specifically for this motion. Okay. If you check out the graph, it starts with positive V. So basically the sign convention is different. You think about how the sign convention will look like. But what we're focusing on right now is the characteristic of the graph, namely the characteristic where the peaks and the smaller velocity will get smaller and smaller each time. And then you can see the area gets smaller and smaller each time. So if the area gets smaller and smaller, the rebound height will get smaller and smaller. So you can expect your displacement time graph will look a bit smaller. Okay, so the difference between this and this is number one, where we start measuring h, and number two, what the interpretation of the velocity is. So I'm not going to go into that. My challenge to you is maybe you can draw a scenario for how this one would look like. Okay, you could draw a diagram that is similar to mine here. Where did we start measuring the h? Where did we start measuring the t? And what direction is it considered to be positive? You can draw it here. All right, so this is the graph. Just make sure you know the difference between acceleration, okay, the peaks will decrease, velocity, and displacement. You expect to get this graph. So basically speaking, if you understand the two dimension one, you just combine many, many ones of them together, and then you will get the rebound graph. Don't worry, okay? If you understand the property, uh, deducing it will be logical, all right? So here's another quick extension for you. Based on the acceleration graph, I can actually sketch the force graph. If you don't know this concept, we will level up in the later chapters. But the relationship here is simply because F is equal to MA. Okay, so uh, here, this is a short collision time. So you have a short force. There's a different change in momentum because the velocity on impact is different. Velocity has a direct link to kinetic energy. But the link is half mv square. So ek is half mv square. Because of the square, the linear graph will now look like a quadratic graph. But if you see here, there's a loss in kinetic energy. Ke is lost here, no more. Ke is lost here. So every time we rebound, the Ke is lost. Okay. And finally, potential energy. You will see every time rebound, the height is different, mgh. Okay, so that's it for the graph. There's nothing much here beyond just drawing for satisfaction and also hoping that whenever you see a graph, you won't panic. You will know how to take your time to interpret. So my challenge to you at the end of this video, you can draw and send to me. Where do you think? So the question would be, where is positive? Where is negative? Where did we start observing the motion? For this graph, on the left, I start observing the motion upon release of the ball. Okay? And for this one, you think, oh, where did we start observing the motion? Uh, where did we measure zero? Mm. But the motion is generally, the graph will get this kind of pattern. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you understand the whole idea about rebound because in the future uh, physics topics, we are going to also look at a lot of rebound scenario because there's a lot here to talk about, can relate to forces, can relate to energy. I will see you in those videos and also the example videos for this one. See you, see you.